Okay, here's the data uh, SAS code uh, for the weighting data. So first step, we create an internal SAS data set using a do loop and the data line statements. So you can see uh, data six input case and city uh, dollar sign means city is a string variable and add add that means uh, starting a new line and then uh, we do uh, do one uh, i from one to four input age smoke width uh, add add that's another line uh, so we're gonna read in um, uh, one two three four five uh, variables and then output okay and then end the data line here's the structure for the um, data set so case number city and then age smoke and wheeze and then you repeatedly read in uh, these three variable age smoke wheeze uh, for four times so let's uh, run this piece of code Okay, so here is uh, the log file, and it tells you SAS send to a new line when input statement reaches past the end of a line. That's the to add add sign uh, does. And if you want to take a look at the data set, you can just print it out. So this is the data set. Um, okay. Um, so first thing we want to do is to fit a GEE with a dichotomous dependent variable using loaded link and exchangeable correlation structures. So this is uh, the bare bone uh, SAS code for fitting GEE model, but in this case we use a binary dependent variable. Okay, take a look at the log file. Uh, it's uh, algorithm converged, algorithm converged, etc and then we take a, a look at the output. So model statement, um, yep. so you see the model information, the data set, binomial distribution, link function, dependent variable width, uh, and the uh, number of observation read, number of observation used, so no missing data, and give you the uh, levels of uh, categorical variable defined by the class statement, the response uh, profile, the dependent variable, and then uh, it tells you ProcGMO is modeling the probability uh, that uh, V is equal to zero, and one way to change this model the pro uh, to the probability uh, V is equal to one is to specify the descending option in the PROC statement. Okay, and then the parameter uh, information and tell you algorithm converged give you the model information uh, response so convergence that model information okay so here's the uh, covariance matrix model based covariance matrix empirical and the working correlation matrix exchangeable working correlation because exchangeable you remember off diagonal is the constant correlation coefficient uh, that is uh, the estimate of that and in particular, in this uh, SAS uh, example, I want you to focus on the goodness of fit, uh, the GE fit uh, criteria. So it's uh, the QIC and the QICU. And uh, if you read the um, SAS uh, documentation, you know the goodness of fit of GE is in the fit uh, criteria section and since GEE does not use maximum likelihood estimate, so we only have a quasi-likelihood information criteria. Uh, but this is, uh, the QIC is really mimicking uh, the um, AIC criteria. So it is a compromise between uh, goodness of fit and the complexity of the model, okay? And the smaller the QIC is, the better the model is, okay? Um, so here uh, for the binary GEE with a uh, logit link um, by binomial distribution and exchangeable correlation structure, uh, we have the QIC and the QICU, okay? Um, but it's not useful uh, if we just do one model. Uh, so we 
uh, the fit criteria is only useful when we compare uh, comparing models. Okay, so uh, I want to try the n structure correlation structure. So basically, I run the same code except I here I specify type equal to n structure, and then it uh, fits another GE model and has the fit criteria. So it's 94.7484 uh, uh, so if we use the n structure uh, the QIC increases so that's not uh, good for uh, not 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 good as good as the one uh, the previous one so I fit another one use the AR1 the auto regressive correlation coefficient and uh, here's the output the fit criteria is 87.15 um, so here, so it is uh, similar to the exchangeable. So there's no, uh, it's really not um, very uh, useful for us. Um, but uh, the um, you know the QICU uh, compared to the exchangeable, the QICU increased a little, uh, but there's no significant testing for that. Um, so it seems like the N structure is doing worse, but uh, the AR1 correlation structure and uh, the exchangeable correlation structure uh, are somewhat similar in performance in terms of model fit. Okay. Uh, so if you want me to make a decision, uh, then uh, I really um, think uh, my personal preference would go to the AR1 since this is uh, the uh, repeat measure over time. Uh, so they do have the tendency that uh, the more part uh, of the time between the two measurements, uh, the lower the correlation uh, would be. Okay. Uh, maybe we want to try uh, something like uh, fitting a uh, nonlinear term. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, I can recreate a data set, but I create h squared, so h2 equal to h times h, and then I fit another model, uh, but now I use h squared, okay, and I run another GE model. So it's the fit criteria is 87.24 and 84.96, so this is uh, actually uh, not doing much better than the um, linear age term. Okay, so um, so it may be it's not uh, really worthwhile to fit a nonlinear term. So in general, um, we can see uh, it's pretty weak uh, for assessing the goodness fit of GEE. So we have the QIC and the QICU. Uh, as a tool, uh, but uh, uh, we don't have any significant testing, uh, and we kind of just need to uh, do what we can here. Uh, one final note is uh, there's an article published by Pan Wei in 2001. Uh, he pointed out the QIC is appropriate for selecting regression models and working correlations whereas appropriate only, I mean the QICU is only appropriate for selecting regression models. So that that is the QICU is only good for selecting the mean structure, but the QIC is good for both mean and variance structure. Okay, uh, that's the end of our first uh, video.